Okay, this is another example of solving for the hydrostatic forces on curved surfaces. And this happens to be a solved midterm example. The problem reads, gate AB is a quarter circle with radius 8 meters, and the gate has a width into the page of 10 meters. The gate is hinged at point B, and the fluid has a standard specific weight of 9,790 newtons per cubic meter. And we're asked to calculate the horizontal and vertical hydrostatic forces on the gate. We want both the magnitude and direction of those forces. And we're asked to calculate, in part B, the force, the downward force applied at point A that will uh, keep the gate from opening. And for simplicity, in an exam question, we're told to neglect the weight of the gate. Oh, I should also point out that, in case you don't know this, all of the hard copies of these solutions can be downloaded from my personal website, drdavidnaylor.net. Now, before I get into the detailed solution, I just wanted to say a few words about the general physics of the solution. I've drawn here the pressure distribution on the gate. So this is the force of the water on the gate. The hydrostatic pressure increases linearly with depth, and it's always perpendicular to the surface. So each of these pressure vectors are upward and to the left. So if we think about the problem in this way, it should be completely obvious that the horizontal force is going to be to the left and the vertical force is going to be upwards. So that needs to be part of our final answer. We start this kind of problem by drawing a free body diagram. And in this case, I've drawn a free body diagram of the gate showing the vertical and horizontal forces, the hydrostatic forces, the force applied at A and the hinge forces at B. And I've also shown the water immediately adjacent to the gate. Now, there are other approaches to solving this problem, and I'll talk about that at the end. But this free body diagram approach, I find, is the most reliable. And so notice that here we have the horizontal force of the water acting on the gate. Of course, the gate pushes back equally, but in the opposite direction. So the force of the gate on the water is to the right. Similarly, we have the force of the water on the gate upwards and the force of the gate on the water acting downwards. In addition, we have the weight of this quarter disc of water. And this surface here is at a depth of R, so it has a uniform pressure distribution on it. And so we have an upward hydrostatic pressure force, which we're going to call FBC. So with these free body diagrams, we can now find the horizontal and vertical hydrostatic forces. And we should keep in mind that the problem statement says that this gate is 10 meters into the page, so we're dealing with this kind of geometry. Okay, so here I've simply reproduced the free body diagram for the water, showing all the forces on this little disk of water adjacent to the gate. I'm going to start by solving for the horizontal force. This horizontal force here on surface AC is just a vertical surface. It's equal to the specific weight of the water, the depth of the centroid of that surface. That's a vertical plane surface, so its centroid is going to be at r upon 2, 4 meters, times the surface area of AC, which is going to be the radius, 8 meters, times 10 meters into the page. So the surface area is 80 square meters, and we can make those substitutions. 9790 newtons per cubic meter, the depth of the centroid, and our 80 square meters of surface area gives a force on the gate of 3,133 kilonewtons. And as we discussed in the previous slide, the force of the water on the gate is to the left. And that's part of the answer for part A. We can now move on to solve for the vertical force. The vertical force requires us to apply static equilibrium in the vertical direction, which I'm going to call y. So some of the forces in the y direction equals 0. FBC is upwards. I'll take that as positive. So FBC minus W, the weight of the water, minus the vertical force on the water must sum to 0. And we're looking for FV, so we can solve for FV. FV is the 
pressure force on surface BC minus the weight of the water. So now we've got to find FBC and the weight of that quarter circle of water. That's what I do on the next slide. So I've reproduced our static equilibrium equation here. FBC is the pressure force on surface BC. It's equal to the gamma times the depth of the centroid times the area of that surface. The depth of the centroid of that surface is 8 meters. In fact, the entire surface is at 8 meters. So we have a uniform pressure distribution on that surface. So the center of pressure is going to be at the centroid. The force FBC is going to act directly at the centroid. And we can make the substitutions. 9790 for the specific weight. The surface depth is 8 meters and the surface area again is 80 square meters and that gives 6,266 kilonewtons upward. We can now calculate the weight of this volume of water. It's going to be the specific weight, so the weight per unit volume times the volume of ABC. The volume of ABC is going to be this area, so pi r squared divided by 4 times the depth times the specific weight of water. And we can make the substitutions. 9790 pi r squared r is 8 meters divided by 4, and our depth into the page is 10 meters. And that gives 4,921 kilonewtons downward, of course. Now we can make our substitutions back into our static equilibrium equation to get Fv. And Fv is, so 6,266 minus 4,921, which gives 1,345. And here's where students tend to make the mistake. As we discussed on, I think, the first slide of this problem, the force of the water on the gate is upwards, as we saw from the pressure distribution. And be careful because the force of the gate on the water is downwards. So that's the answer to part A. We've now done both the horizontal and vertical hydrostatic forces on the gate. Now we can move on to part B, where we are looking to find the force applied at A. This requires us to locate the lines of action of the vertical horizontal forces. I'm sure you've done this sort of problem before. What we're going to do is we know the magnitude of FH and FV. We now need to find out where they act on the gate. And then we're going to apply the condition for static equilibrium that the sum of the moments about the hinge uh, are zero. And why do we use the hinge? Well, we use the hinge because we want to avoid calculating these hinge forces. Just makes the problem simple. So now we move on first to finding the line of action of FH. This is called the center of pressure. And recall that the center of pressure for this vertical surface AC acts below the centroid. And it acts below the centroid by an amount IXX sine theta over HC times the surface area. IXX is the second moment of area of surface AC taken about a horizontal axis through the centroid. So for surface AC, for a a rectangular surface, you may recall that it's the width times the height cubed divided by 12. The width is 10 meters. The height of the surface is 8 meters cubed divided by 12. And we get the second moment of area about the centroid through a horizontal axis is equal to 426.7 meters to the fourth. Now we can make the remainder of the substitutions. Note that the angle here, this surface AC is at 90 degrees with respect to the free surface. So theta equals 90 degrees. So we can make the remainder of the substitutions. YCP is minus 426.7 meters to the fourth sine of 90 degrees, which is 1. The depth of the centroid of the surface is 4 meters and the surface area is 80 square meters. And so that gives minus 1.333 meters. That's YCP. That's the distance below the centroid for the location of the center of pressure. That's what the minus sign means. So the total distance from the free surface to the center of pressure is 4 plus 1.33. 
that's 5.33 meters. We can subtract that from the total distance, 8 meters, to find the moment arm of FH relative to B, which is what we want. And that works out to be uh, the radius upon 3, which is 2.667 meters. Now we can move on to finding the line of action of the vertical force. The line of action of FV here is probably the most difficult part of this problem. I need to find this distance, I'm going to call it X bar, the moment arm of FV from the hinge at point B. And to do this, we consider the free body diagram of the water. And here I've got all the forces on the water here. We've got the weight, this force FBC that we calculated, the horizontal forces. And it was given in the exam, and you can find it in uh, most textbooks. You can find the centroids of a, of a quarter circle, and the centroid of a quarter circle is located at 4r upon 3 pi. So I've located the distance of, of this edge to the centroid, which would be the center of gravity. And of course, if this is 4r upon 3 pi, and this total distance here is r, then the distance from the weight to the moment arm at b is r minus 4r upon 3 pi. It turns out for this kind of problem, this little quarter circle of water is in perfect static equilibrium. You can take moments about any point, but it makes sense to take moments about b because we're, we really want to find out this moment arm x bar in order to calculate the force at a. So we're going to take moments about, about b, set them to zero, static equilibrium, and so I'm going to take counterclockwise as positive. So FBC, it acts at the center of this surface because we have a uniform pressure distribution on BC. So FBC times R2, the moment arm of the weight force is R minus 4R upon 3 pi. And it's in the opposite direction. It's in the clockwise direction, so it's negative. And FV also acts in the uh, clockwise direction about B. So it's FV times the unknown distance X bar. And we can solve this equation for x bar, which I've done here. You can check my algebra. Note that I didn't have to deal with the, the horizontal forces here because they're equal and opposite, and they're equal and opposite, and they're at the same moment arm from B, so they cancel out. So now we can evaluate x bar, the moment arm of the vertical force. And here I've reproduced the free body diagram again, and I've inserted the known values for the vertical force, the weight force, and the hydrostatic force on the lower surface, FBC. And so we can make the substitutions. FBC times the moment arm of 4 meters, because it acts in the center of the surface. The weight force, 4,921, has a moment arm of r minus 4r upon 3 pi. So 8 minus 4 times 8 divided by 3 pi, and then all divided by the vertical force, which is 1,345. And that gives that our moment arm of the vertical force here, x bar, is 1.787 meters. So now we can go back to our free body diagram of the gate and apply those forces in the opposite direction because the force of the water on the gate is in the opposite direction and do our sum of the moments about the hinge. And that's what I do on the next slide. So we have the free body diagram of the gate. I've got the horizontal and vertical forces and their lines of action that we've just calculated. Notice that FA acts at a moment arm of R from, from B. So we can take the sum of the moments about B as zero for static equilibrium. So FA acts downward and produces a clockwise moment. So I'm going to take that as positive, FA times 8. And FH and FV have a counterclockwise moment. And so FH times 2.667. And FV times 1.787 meters must sum to zero. Now we can solve this equation for FA and make the substitutions.
And that means that the force at A required to keep the gate from opening is 1,345 kilonewtons. And that's the answer to part B. Now, coincidentally, that turns out to be equal to the vertical force, but that's kind of a fluke of the particular geometry of this problem. That won't always be the case. And so that completes the solution. Just as one final comment, I'll just make a note that there is an alternate way to find the vertical force. Some books call it the missing water approach. It's fine, but I, I don't find it as generally applicable as the free body diagram method that I've shown you. But if you have water, if you imagine water being in this location, then that would balance the pressure force across the gate and the vertical force on the gate would be zero. So you can make the argument that the weight of the water required to balance the vertical force on the gate is equal to the vertical force. It's okay to use this approach, but if you use this approach, you'd have to come up with a different method to find uh, the line of action. Okay, and that completes this example.